and the wheels fell off immediately before it hit the inflatable giraffe. And now it's time for the weather with Jim... Ooh, that's not the weather. Uh, Ray, you're live on air. Today, our intrepid reporter Ray is once again somewhere very exotic and, dare I say it, dangerous. What's happening, Ray, and have you finished your lunch yet? I'm here in the Sahahaha Desert. Rather you than me, Ray. <laughs> Hold on, where did you say? Don't you mean Sahara Desert? Nope. This is the Sahahaha Desert. Never heard of it. Are you sure it's not the Sahara? Ugh. The Sahahaha Desert is twice as hot, and therefore twice as deadly as any other desert in the world. There's no such place, Ray, which makes you twice as stupid. Anyway, whatever. I'm here because there's been reports of a huge plague of man-eating locusts around here. Even though I'm an incredibly brave reporter, I don't want to take any chances. So I'm wearing this special protective gear, which I've been told will withstand... You're a <laughs> What was that, Ray? Oh dear, sorry about that. It looks as though Ray's gone down with a bit of a bug. Tales. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Once upon a time, there was a queen who named her daughter Snow White because her skin was so fair and lovely. Unfortunately, the queen died and Snow White's father married a new queen who wasn't very nice at all. In fact, she was evil, vain and wicked. Every morning, she would stand in front of a magic mirror and say, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror would always answer, You are my queen. Seasons passed, and as the years went by, Snow White's cruel and wicked stepmother continued to treat her very badly indeed, and although her life wasn't easy, Snow White grew into a very beautiful young woman with fair skin and jet black hair. One day the Queen asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Snow White is the fairest of them all. The Queen wasn't at all pleased, and ordered a servant to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. The servant did as he was instructed, but luckily for Snow White, the servant couldn't bring himself to kill her because she was so lovely. Instead, he released her and told her to run and hide in the forest where she would be safe from the Black Queen. In the forest, Snow White met seven dwarves who befriended her and in exchange for doing their cooking, cleaning and other light domestic duties, gave her food and shelter in the little cottage. She lived happily with the dwarves and took care of them and they loved her dearly. Then one day when the evil queen asked her magic mirror, who's the fairest of them all, the mirror once again replied, Snow White. The evil queen was not at all happy that Snow White was still alive. She cunningly disguised herself as an old peddler woman and made a batch of rosy red poisoned apples. She went to the dwarf's house and tempted Snow White into eating a poisoned apple, which she did, and immediately it put her into an everlasting sleep. 
The dwarves placed Snow White in a glass coffin and kept watch over her until one day a handsome prince passed by. He was so taken with Snow White's beauty that he just had to kiss her. The kiss broke the spell and Snow White woke from her deep sleep and soon she and the prince were married and they lived happily ever after. As for the evil stepmother, some say she got so enraged that she dropped dead. I have my own ideas. mile an hour tones. The three little pigs. Once upon a time there were three little pigs. Their parents decided that it was time for them to leave home and make their own way in the world. But it wasn't safe in the big bad world as a big bad wolf lived nearby and he liked nothing more than to eat little pigs. The three pigs decided to each build a house to keep them safe from the wolf. The first little pig wasn't very bright. He built his house of straw. Along came the wolf and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he did, quite easily. The first little pig ran quickly to his brother's house, who, being slightly more intelligent, had built his house from sticks. The big bad wolf arrived with a bit more huffing and puffing and blew the stick house to bits. The two little pigs ran to the third pig's house. This one was quite clever and had built his house from bricks. The wolf huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed, but no matter how hard he blew, he couldn't budge the brick house one bit. By now, the wolf was getting a bit peckish, so he decided to climb down the chimney and eat the three little pigs for lunch. The pigs had other plans, and they placed a big pot of boiling water in the fireplace. What happened next is a bit of a mystery. 
Some say that the three little pigs cooked up the wolf and ate him for dinner. Others that the scalded wolf ran off never to be seen again. I have my own ideas.